Um, all right, so just to recall, guys, a couple things that we remember from chapter one as well from chapter two. If I want to identify the x-intercept, remember that's when y equals zero, right? For all functions. So therefore, I'm just going to set f of x equal to zero, get f of x interchangeable, x minus one over x squared minus four. Now we've got to solve for x. Well, crap, we have x in the numerator and denominator. So to get it off the denominator, we're going to multiply by an x squared minus 4. Here, it divides to 1. Here, it multiplies to 0. So we're just left with the numerator equal to 0. Quick little trick here, right? Is guys, is it always just going to be, if we have a rational function, is it all a rational expression equal to 0? Is it always just going to be the numerator equal to 0? Does it really matter? What's it, could this have been like x to the 22nd power? Would that have made a difference? No. So all, like, so there's nothing wrong with remembering the process, x-intercept y equals 0, because you should know that. But if you guys want a little trick, for a rational function when it's in that form, just set the numerator equal to 0. For the y-intercepts, we have been taught x has to equal 0. And to put x equals 0, we'll just have f of x equals 0 minus 1 over 0 squared minus 4. Well. That simplifies to negative 1 fourth. And therefore, we can say the y-intercept then is sorry, positive 1 fourth. So let's see, is there maybe a trick? Anytime there was an x, it went to 0, right? So in reality, if we really just wanted to find the trick here, we could just take constant over constant. We didn't have to actually have to show all this work. We could just take the constant over constant. If we forgot, just plug 0 in for x, right? But hopefully, you guys can see how that moves up. Vertical asymptotes. You guys remember, vertical asymptotes are values that make the denominator 0 that are non-removable. Right? Because we've talked about discontinuities before. But remember, ladies and gentlemen, there's two different types of discontinuities that we talked about for rational expressions, holes and asymptotes. So how do I know what it is? Well, first of all, remember last chapter we talked about simplifying? If you can simplify it, simplify. OK, does anything get divided out? No, so there's no holes, right? So we're good there. So now, to find the asymptotes, we just need to say what values make the denominator equal to 0. So you set your denominator equal to 0. Should I do this one or that one? Or does it matter? It doesn't matter. Both of them work. Where was the mistake people made when they did this? They forgot to do the plus or minus, right? Here, you only have 1x. So you add 4, take the square root. You have to include plus or minus. Why did we practice the linear factorization last chapter? Because when you factor it, you're not going to forget the plus or minus. It's right in front of you, right? You apply the zero product property, and you get both of them. So either way, the answer is plus or minus 2. All right? I'm not going to explain why this happens, because that's the part of the lesson. but. Um, I'll let you know that the horizontal asymptote is 0, which you're about to see in a second. OK? So you guys have to, and you guys have to figure this out on your own, why that